Hey, how's everybody doing today? It is the Chase Carter Concept Podcast for Thursday, January 14th. Hope everybody's doing okay. Uh, what have I been doing? Uh, just got done going for a run. Almost passed out a little bit. Maybe got a little heat stroke. I don't know. Um, didn't stop running, jogging. I mean, I was jogging real slow for some reason today. I No energy today. None at all. Um, but didn't stop unless I crossed the street once. So I did have to stop for a, a vehicle. So that counts. Very disappointed in that in myself. Um, didn't get hit by a golf ball. Almost didn't get killed this time. So it was good. Little, uh, I get a little shifty whenever I'm, uh, jogging around the uh, golf course. I'm thinking at any moment, my life could be over at any moment. If I was religious, I'd say a little prayer. If you were religious. <clears throat> um, what have I been doing? Well, watched uh, Newsroom, finished that, and I, I finished it, and then I remembered that I think I saw it already. I remember I saw the first season, but I, I wanted to go back and you know watch it all the way through, get caught up, what have you. Good show, but by the end of it, I remembered the last episode. And I was like, I've already seen, what am I doing? So I'm forgetting. I'm getting to the the point where I'm forgetting. I watched three whole seasons of it years ago, and I, I couldn't remember that I watched it. So that's an interesting mental um, uh, failure in my life. Um me and Corey haven't really been playing video. We played Sea of Thieves uh, last weekend. I'm still playing Assassin's Creed. Um, an hour or two here or there. Um, I think I'm over, I think, 100 hours into the game. I'm trying to collect everything, do all the side missions, get the game done, complete it. And then um, I'm probably going to move on to Control. That's an older game. It's free right now on the Xbox Games Pass. It's going to be good. So uh, I'm going to do that. Um, that's my video game life right now. Um, I'm not playing 2K20 as much because there's, I've been, I was recording the games and then editing them. Um, but for some reason it's not recording the audio. All of a sudden it stopped. I can't, I, I can't do it for some reason. Um, and plus I have to hook up my old Xbox, my Xbox One X to stream to my computer and then on the computer I have to record the screen then take that video um, put that video into an mp4 convert it to an mp4 and then when I put that video inside my video editor editing software there's no audio all of a sudden out of nowhere it was working fine but then all of a sudden it doesn't work so um, it's not that important so I'm just gonna probably stop recording I'm, I'll still still play it because I like NBA 2k20 um, but yeah, ah, bums me out. Just bums me out. I'm going to see if I can do a workaround, but I'm not a, it's not a must right now. Um, yeah, Ray came over last weekend. Um, I think I already talked about that. So I'm not, plus nobody wants to hear about that guy. Um, all right. So, so let's get into the news and what has been going on lately that has interests me. Um, it's very interesting that, um, the, the big social media outlets all in unison, all at the same time, it seemed like can't has, have been canceling Donald Trump and conservative viewpoints. I've seen, um, news articles where they highlight multiple conservative, uh, accounts and they just block and they just deleted them or blocked them. And then they're even, um, they went after parlor, which by the way, this is the dumbest thing they could have done. This is the dumbest thing. I had never even heard about parlor until they canceled it. These morons. The, okay. So say hypothetically, this is the dumbest thing in the world because you can't cancel them. You can't just get rid of them off your platform. That's not legal. I mean, you, you, they had a contract, uh, as far as I heard, the news reports that I've watched, 
And by news reports, I mean five minute YouTube videos. Parler had a contract with Google Play and Amazon, or at least, no, Amazon for use of their servers. And then without um, warning, no, they, they, they warned them. And then the, the CFO, I, I believe I watched it like a 10 minute interview with her. And she said, Amazon gave them a warning um, to take down these, um, uh, what was it? A warning that they would shut down their, their server. They would access to their Amazon servers. This is complicated. It's, my brain is already mush. But Amazon warned them that they would take Parler off their servers or they wouldn't have access to their basically their internet um, unless, and Amazon has over, I think, 50, the internet servers, Amazon has over 50% of them in the United States. And then uh, Microsoft has 16% and uh, Google's like two or three, some, some, I mean, how big is Amazon? Jesus. But anyway, um, they warned them and then said everything was okay. And then the next day, they deleted them from, so the uh, parlors suing them for taking them off without giving them time to fix the issue. And the reason they can't um, fix the issue as quickly as other social media outlets is because they don't let AI software scan every post and look for keywords that bring attention to them. They have to basically go look for them themselves. So like a human being actually has to sit at a computer and type out a phrase, they don't have software that scans everything because they don't want um, their pledge, I guess. I don't know. This could be a pledge or it could be a very convenient way to not take down as many things um, as the other companies or just a way to save money because I'm guessing the, maybe the AI systems cost money. I don't know. But what would be cheaper, having an AI system scan everything or having a human beings manually do it? And then I'm thinking, how many human beings do you have manually searching your um, your 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 app? I don't even know. Is, is it a Twitter? Is it a Facebook? I don't even know what kind of app it is. Um, but these 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 morons, these Twitter and it, Amazon, not not Twitter, but Amazon, they're morons. They're absolute morons because, say, um, Parler is a, 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 a an up and coming fast growing social media platform hypothetically let's say that just play around in, in my head what's the one thing that you don't want to give them to make them grow bigger press so if you do something that could be deemed illegal you're going to get a lot of people upset regardless and you're now they're on the news this lady who i've never seen before who i would, would have never known existed the CFO or whatever of Parler, I know I know what she looks like now because they canceled them. So instead of taking them off completely within two days, Parler said it was two days as far as the first warning goes and then when they remove them from, that's not enough time for them to take. And they didn't even specify what um, – uh, the CFO said in their email, Amazon's email, they didn't specify any actual comments made by anybody. They just said you have to take, there was a vague, uh, they have to take down these uh, calls to violence, it, just a, a generalized, it's like there's calls to violence on every social media account. You can't punish the social media app for the users. If I call up my friend and um, um, plan a, an attack, it's not the the telephone company's fault. What are we What are we doing here? This is a real weird. Um, I I got I understand business wise why Amazon and Twitter and Facebook are all working together to get rid of this because that that the uh, conservative Republican view, I mean the the right wing view because that's what the, who they disagree with. I get that. But then in my, in my head a, a few days ago, I thought that, hey, if they don't want someone on their platform, they don't have to have anyone on their platform. It's, it's fine. They can ban whoever they want for whatever reason. And I used a weird analogy, which I don't know makes sense. 
is Facebook didn't want to have puppies on their account. Anything a pup, any uh, pictures of puppies, then they could ban it. Doesn't matter. Or frogs, or you know, whatever. That's their um, uh, policy. But then I thought, like, because they're banning news stories and people who report on things, they're banning um, Donald Trump for saying he incited violence by using the term march and we have to show them our strength in a speech. But there's every politician uses the uses these war terms. Everybody does. So you can't and like you can't. When he says these things, march doesn't mean anything. March just means marching down the street. It doesn't mean any violence. If you want to nitpick, I don't think legally they have a leg to stand on. To because they're, they're, they they voted to impeach him, and then they they have to prove it. And like uh, unless they have private uh, messages from the guy saying, "Yeah, we need to rile up some people so they break into the Capitol and do illegal shit." then he shouldn't be able to be impeached. And the fact that they're putting even more, um, uh, what, like gasoline onto the fire as far as this whole, um, uh, transition of powers is supposed to happen. And then Donald Trump said, like, I heard something where he's not going to be at the transfer of power or the inauguration, um, of the president. And I'm like, Oh, come on, dude, quit being a little bitch. You lost, take your loss, show up, shake the person's hand who beat you. That's how you know, like, that's the kind of person that you would want. That's, that's one of the things that Donald Trump's done a few things that I don't like. Um, a lot that I do like. But the thing I don't like about him is he talks tough. This is just basing it, boiling it down to re- calling out China, saying, hey, these motherfuckers talking real tough as far as business wise goes. And then when he loses, and he says he never lost the election, he's like, it was stolen. It's like, dude, it wasn't stolen. Was there voter fraud? Yes. People have been arrested. I've, I've seen um, um, pictures and articles of people being arrested. I've seen videos of this one lady saying that she could buy, you know, a few thousand, up to a couple thousand votes. She's like, I can get these uh, ballots changed and... Um, The police just arrested her uh, a few days ago. So it was real interesting um, that they've proved, I mean, obviously there's going to be voter fraud, but to what extent was, is it going to overturn the election? No. So at least they haven't proved that yet. They can't prove it. So if you can't prove something in a court of law, I think you have an obligation as president to stop saying these, these stupid things. But if he keeps saying that he never lost, he gets to keep his fan base. If he says he lost, then all those people will look at him like a loser. It's like a undefeated boxer who loses for the first time and then complains about certain circumstances. It's like when Deontay Wilder complained that his the suit that he wore out to the fight was too heavy and he didn't have legs. That's why he was tired and he lost. It's like, no, dude, you got your ass whooped. And that's fine. We all get our ass whooped. Life beats all of us up. Take your loss. And move on, get better. And that's what Republicans and Donald Trump should do. And Donald Trump, it wasn't even a Republican. He was a Democrat basically his whole life. Didn't make any sense. Oh, look who's home. Oh, wait, hold on. I got the, I got the, I got it on. I'm doing the, I'm doing the podcast right now. I need you to leave. On about stuff while she's sitting here walking back and forth, feeding the cat. She stepped on the cat. Um, she was feeding them and then she goes from the refrigerator is looking at me and then takes three steps backwards without looking. And of course the cats are all around her because she has cat food and then and she goes, Oh my God, Salem. Oh my God. I didn't mean to step on you. It's like, you're, you're not looking where you're going. You know, cats are fluttering around your feet. Pay attention. Don't step on your cat's paw. I'm going to turn her into cat social social services. I don't know why that was difficult for me to say. And then the cat jumped over, um, jumped on the fence, 
left the back door, jumped on the fence, and then jumped on our neighbor's uh, garage roof. And then their little dog. And then th- th- this asshole cat sits on the ledge right above this dog. And the dog's just meow, 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 barking. And the cat, instead of just moving over six inches to the right where the dog can't see, see him. Same spot. The cat just sits there. He's like, yeah, bitch, look at me. Look at me. You can't get up here. An asshole move. But going back to uh, Parlor, I just think it's very stupid for the tech companies to ban them unless they have a legal leg to stand on. Um, maybe they believe they can't fight it in court. Parlor doesn't have enough money to fight them in court. Obviously, Amazon has endless amounts of money. but And everyone, you know, almost everybody uses Amazon. So it's... It's 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 interesting. It's an interesting um, way to do business is to use um, like social consciousness um, to ban a group of people or a social media app. It's a business. So which which I don't understand is I thought that these tech companies can put out whatever they want. The Facebook can put whatever out on their their app they want, um, but they can't legally because then they become a news network because there was some issue where they they um, they were in court and they said, well, anyone can post anything unless it's, you know, against the, um, uh, unless it violates um, law, our laws. They're just inciting inciting violence, threats, stuff like that. And then they have um, like racial slurs, hate speech, like bullying. They they can ban you for and all that stuff. But as far as just a political standpoint, they don't have a leg to if they don't have a leg to stand on legally, if they just ban you for being a conservative or a Republican view. But I don't think. Democrats have said we have to fight to keep, you know, to keep control of the house or whatever. They use these terms, fight, uh, battlegrounds. I remember um, uh, if you see any election, this battleground state, who's going to come out victorious in this battle? And you're using warlike terms for an election. Nobody is fighting. Nobody is physically fighting an altercation. So if they, they ban Trump from that, from using those words, if they impeach him from using the term march, show show them our strength. Um, unless he said something else that I'm not aware of. The the speech that I heard, he didn't incite any violence. So it was interesting. Like legally, I'm trying to, legally as someone who is not a lawyer. Um, but from my opinion, he, di- he didn't because then no politician anywhere can use any kind of violent rhetoric. Because then, if that leads to um, a, you know people in his group, his or her group, to go out and do something stupid, that that shouldn't fall on the politicians' shoulders. If I was like, "Hey, you have to you have to fight, you have to put up uh, a fight, or your country is coming to an end," you know, and then they always say that. They always say, "Then the country won't be recognizable." It's like it, there's nothing in this country that happens overnight. It happens slowly. And that's a good thing because then we would be swinging back and forth rapidly. Small changes are fine. But everyone says the world was going to end when Trump got elected. Hey, guess what? It's still here. His last year in in office, a a pandemic hit. And we're all still, we're still here. A lot of us are still here. I'm pretty sure Biden and uh, Harris aren't going to end the United States as we know it, pretty sure. Um, but it's just, it's weird because it's it always seems now like the end of the world's coming. This is the worst it's been. I can't remember a time, these, these, these idiots who live, who only pay attention, like the, when they're growing up and they're, they're not like me, not paying attention. Oh, everything's fine in politics. Everything wasn't fine. They were still doing this shit. They were still battling. They were still going at each other. 
it's just real weird. Like there, there were times when um, women had to fight for their their rights. Black people had to fight for their rights. It's it's worse than that. It's worse than that. I don't think so. I don't like this um, the world ending garbage nonsense. I got a friend Ray who's like, the, the Democrats are going to take over everything. What are they going to do to you? Are they going to stop you from working? Putting food on your table? No, they're not. They're not. You still got your job. You work in security. You're fine. Now, countless other people aren't because of Democrats and taking um, restaurants almost completely out of business while keeping their restaurants open, while shutting down wineries, keeping their wineries open. There's people like that. And yes, those people sh- should go to jail. Jail. That should somehow be illegal. I don't know. To me. If you're running a country or a state and you're like, hey, uh, restaurants, you can't go to a restaurant. You have to, you have to shut down your restaurant in this area. Well, but you didn't shut down in the areas that your restaurants are at. You all, you all kept open. Why? Well, <laughs> because we'd lose money and go out of business. And I don't want to do that. So it's like, what? Huh? So, uh, I just, we, I think as people, just, this is how I feel. We need politicians to talk to us like we're adults. Instead of some, instead of children. When I heard uh, Gavin Newsom's apology, it was like a parent who got caught smoking weed while also disciplining, disciplining their child for smoking pot. He was like, well, see what I should have done is I should have recognized this. I should have in the spirit, I, I, you know, in the spirit of what we want people to do. I tell you, you know, just we, I should have saw what was going on. I should have got when I, when I got there, I should have assessed the situation. It's like, mother, it was your party. You moron. You knew how many people were going to be there. You knew that you're the governor and you don't know where you're going to be and who's going to be there. Then you're an idiot then. And you don't need to hold office anyway. It was, was it a surprise birthday party? They could have said that. That would have been a great lie. But then they would have, have had to prove it. But if, if, if but you, you, can't, you can't make that because if you say that and then they have, you know, text messages or, you know, emails from other people from him saying, hey, I'll show up at the party. Then, then he's going to be even more trouble. But the audacity of these, um, and that's why I don't really trust um, the the Democrats. Really turn me off as far as their whole. They make the rules and then they don't abide by their own rules. It's like, dude, you're a human being too. You're supposedly in this with supposedly, 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 supposedly in this with the rest of us. But now you're because you got elected, you don't have to listen. To your own rule. I know better. I know. It's like, no. You make a rule. You have to abide by it. You can't say, hey, don't kill people. Then go out and kill people. You, you should go to jail. You can't say, hey, it's a, uh, illegal to be out and to, and to do this. Follow the guidelines. This is what we have. If you have too many people over at your house, we're going to, we're going to give you a fine. In fact, we encourage neighbors to narc on each other to let us know what's going on so we can get out, get this riffraff out of here. It's like, what are you, what are you doing? But it's dumb, but, uh, but and I'm getting off on a tangent here. But the worst thing, I think, um, if Twitter, Facebook, and Amazon all, we're all working together. It seemed like they were because it, they all can't, unless like one t- person did it. And then um, if Amazon and Facebook hadn't, hadn't uh, banned whoever, then they would be looked at as they didn't do anything. So it was kind of like a domino effect. But if it was orchestrated, they're the dumbest business people in the world because I'd never heard of Parler. And now whenever they come back, I'm downloading the app. I'm, I'm, I'm with them. I'm downloading it. I like an underdog story. 
Now, will I will I use it? Ah, I, I have no idea. I have to see what it's about. But the worst, the worst thing you can do is acknowledge your competitors are a problem. That gives that gives them so much more energy and momentum. If they get through this, if Parler gets back on Google Play Store and you know have is back on the Amazon servers, they're gun going to explode in popularity. And now you people could get on their their app and realize it's shit and then get off. It doesn't matter. Um, but man, they messed up. That is such a terrible business move to make. You can't shut someone down. You can't. You, you, you can't do that. You can't shut them down because they don't uh, take down posts that you didn't even select. When and then other people can point to Twitter that has that have dictators on the on their on their website on their site that's not banned. So it's like what 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 are we what what games are we playing here? And it and it's not then you can see the hypocrisy in Twitter and Facebook, but it's just a business move. And then when you break it down as far as a business move goes, it's so stupid because now it's a national news story. Parler is, has never been in national news stories until right now. And they, they look like the little guy getting beat up by the big guy. And everybody loves an underdog story. It's like, oh, we were even... Where we can post even more silly things, we can be a little bit more free on uh, on Parlor. Let's go over there. Let's post our you know our our gross memes over there. Our you know any anything you want. You like racial jokes? Have at it on Parlor, and you're not going to get banned. You you want to post uh, pictures of uh, women or men in scantily clad outfits? Let's go on Parlor. It's like Twitter. Twitter. There's porn on Twitter. There's porn on Twitter. But Donald Trump is – what do we do? What? What What did he say exactly? And then um, what was it? I heard uh, there were three tweets that got taken down, and then that's when he got removed. And, but I can't see – but I, I looked up – I spent 30, 35 minutes trying to find the tweets. I couldn't find the tweets anywhere. It's like Donald Trump was removed from Twitter because of uh, tweets. And I'm like, what tweets? What, what did he say? What did he say? I, I would like to know. But I can't find him anywhere. It was just the video, the the speech that he made, is what they're citing now. Not the, the they they didn't quote him in the in the tweets. So I'm like, what did he say? Did he say what exactly did he say? And then my stepdad calls me and says, "Hey, be careful on the 20th." Uh, Trump said in a video for all of his supporters to uh, get guns and head to the capital of every state. And, and take over everything. And I'm like, he said that in a video. He's like, yeah. He's like, I saw it. You saw it in the video. And I said, and he said, yes. I was like, can you please send me the video? I haven't gotten anything, anything back. So he got told by like five, 18th hand. Did you hear what Trump said? Oh, Trump said this. It's like, no, there's people, there's extremist groups saying that they're going to go to a, um, if Donald Trump gets impeached. Which won't happen until after the ele- after the not after the transfer of power. Anyway, the process won't. It, it takes longer. Um, they're not going to throw him out in uh, what is what was today the fourteenth in f- six days. That's not a thing. Um, I'm pretty sure the impeachment process takes longer than seven days, six days. Um, and if it and if it isn't, then that's not really a good. Um, <laughs> Uh, investigation into what's wrong, um, into what's going on. Like, I would like you, if you're going to remove a president, I would like you t- to take longer than seven days to, to mull over that, um, that decision, please. That's yes. Okay, good. But man, it's, it's interesting. It's like it, po- politics have become more reality TV based because a news network needs you to watch in order to sell advertising. So they always just strum up. They always highlight it a little bit more. They exaggerate stories, make it seem like it's dire. And when people say this is the worst it's been 
in the country's history. How egocentric are you? Do you know what's happened in this country previously? It's like nobody has a history book. Yes, it's unprecedented that, um, uh, what was it? The the Democrats wanted to, to take mother, father, son. You can't use those terms because they want to be gender neutral. They don't want to offend anybody, which I don't understand how I'd, I would have to look into that more. I just saw that it, it, they can't use that, I guess, in the in the chambers or whatever. I don't even know the full term, but it was just saw some headline and I read a few paragraphs and I got I think I got distracted by something else. Um, then when a pastor says, ah, men and ah, women, you, so you start to see little cracks. You're like, are they, and, but then people think these little cracks are going to destroy the, the entire foundation. It's like, no, these are just people who are trying stuff. They're bored. That Pat, that guy that I think, I think he was a pastor. I think he is a pastor. Um, he, 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 just, he just wants attention. He knows it's going to get clicks. He's he's trying to be the cool guy who's who's accepting. Who's I don't want to discriminate against anybody. That's how socially conscious I am. It's like, do you know that amen has nothing to do with gender at all? Yeah, I do. Well, then why'd you say it? He knows what it means. I saw an inter- I was watching another twelve minute interview on him. He's like, yeah, I know that it means make it so or so be it. Well, then if you know what it means, then why just say- well I just wanted it to be inclusive. To recognize that the women have done, you know, so many good things. You think the that's so patronizing that you think women need your help to, to to for them to get recognition. Like they can't stand up on their own. That is so like, oh, we're gonna help these poor little women who didn't get the recognition. So no. You're an idiot. But he's not an idiot. Because he's popular now. People know, more people know his name. I don't know his name. I just know he's some pastor. Who if I met and asked, it's like, did you really, you, you just wanted to get clicks. You wanted to get Instagram followers. Oh, okay. That's fine. That's all we're playing for. That's fine. But then I'm, I'm, I make fun of right-wing people who are like, they're trying to take away our constitutional rights. You see, we can't even say men and women. We have to say all women now. It's like, no. That's not what he's, no, that's not what he's doing. At least in my head, that's not what he's doing. He just said something that he thought would get him clicks and attentions and give him standing ovations from the women's section on social media. He's probably trying, I don't know, I don't know if he's married, but he's trying probably to get a little ass, a little, little, little ass. You're, champ, you're a champion for women? Oh my God, Mr. Pastor. All of a sudden, you see he's divorced and he's got all these models on his arm. This is what I, ah, women. Ah, I wonder if if he's in bed when he finishes. Ah, women. Ah. Unbelievable. I think both sides are freaking out. And any little change to to their society, they think it's going to be the end of the world. And it's not. It's, It's really not. And because me, me and my friend Ray were having this uh, discussion on whether uh, I think I talked about it a little bit earlier, but I didn't finish my thought. There's a big surprise, Chase. Um, but my friend said Twitter shouldn't be a. It's um, it's like it's his right to post on Facebook and Twitter. I was like, it's your constitutional right to fo- to post on Facebook and Twitter. It's like I don't think so. Those are private companies. And you have to abide by their policies. Now, that 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 was my argument. Like you can't go inside um, in and out, and then just start um, calmly say to every customer that walks up, you know, you, you know, God's not real. Just say that I'm an atheist. God's not real. Like it's a religious. Pl- like the it's found it's um its foundation is uh, Christianity, and they're they're not gonna let you do that. They, they'll kick you out. But then you can say that's like disturbing the peace. You can get by with that. But just as far as their mess, you can't go into someone else's business and start what they say, disrupting their norm, I guess, or their beliefs. But that's not the same thing because there was some, um, 
what was it? Uh, they they held a um, they called the, the the social media um, like the giants in, and then um, to see if they can hold them liable for things that were posted on their on their platform. And of course, Facebook and Twitter didn't want to get sued, so they said we're we're a nonpartisan platform that you can post whatever you want to. And as long as you're not violating, you know, and, and this is how they don't get uh, sued by people. Um, unless you, you don't viol- uh, violate the lands of the law, what have you, um, then you can post whatever you want. Any story you want to, but now Facebook and Twitter are having independent, independent, they say, fact checkers. But we don't know who these independent fact checkers are. And I'm going to guess that they're Democrats. So if, especially since all of the people getting banned are mostly conservative, that's where your issue, at least it seems that way. I'd, I'd have to look at more statistics. But it seems, maybe just the right wing people are a little bit more loud, but I didn't hear about any um, people being banned from Twitter during the black lives matter riots. And you can say, Oh, they were protesting. Well, it was like a lot of them weren't because there was $3 billion worth of damage in the country and private property, all that stuff. And then when you sympathize towards them, when you say, Hey, no, I understand that they feel that the police department has betrayed them that they can't um, they can't go to the police department for protection so they're going to fight against the system they shouldn't be out there destroying things but I understand you're sympathizing for people doing illegal things so you're causing that you someone hears that hears you say that any politician then you're inciting more violence you're inciting more violence so then should you go to jail too because you can understand, the people who stormed the Capitol, for some reason, thought that thought that um, they're they're stealing the the government. They that they were doing illegal things. Like, no, they're not doing anything illegal. Those people aren't doing anything illegal that you can prove. So, what is the the um I, I, the the argument? I, I I I don't get it. But it um. Going back to the 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 Facebook thing, Facebook got them all over the place today. On the Facebook and Twitter thing, I'm trying to wrap my head around this, trying to talk it out in my head and with um, my friend. And then I heard um, Tulsi Gabbard say that they have to let both they have to let anything on their website as long as it doesn't um, what was it? As long as it doesn't violate United States law. Anything. They have to let anything, as long as it doesn't violate United States law. Because then those, um, if they're curating content, then they're a news organization. And a news organization can be sued for what is posted on their site. So if CNN says something that's not true about somebody, they're liable. They could be sued. Facebook can't. So that's how they're getting around this whole thing. So at first they were like, anyone can post whatever. And then they didn't like something that somebody was doing using their platform for um, reasons that they disagreed with. And now they're saying, now they're trying to use the, he's inciting violence when every politician, I don't care if you're a Democrat, Republican, uh, tea party, you know, whatever independent, they all use the terms battle fight March, you know, show them our strength. We're, they think we're weak. Show them our, we're strong. They go off on these tangents. And it's just like, well, if you're letting the other people use those words, you have to let this just because you disagree with them. And it comes to the point, like they're all, it just seems like they're all out of touch um, and extremely two-faced. Even Donald Trump talking about how how strong he is, how big he is, um, he's a you know successful guy, and then you lose an election and you won't even show up. 
like how much of a, a a whiny bitch do you have to be to lose even if you think like if if you think it's um if you, if you think something and there's no evidence so strongly that you don't show up to something you're you're a bitch especially when you lost if you're if you're if you believe in bigfoot so much and there's no evidence but then you won't go and then someone's like prove prove i don't know if this is a good analogy prove that bigfoot exists go to court prove that it exists you go to court they say that's not efficient evidence this is fake this this is fake this is fake this is fake that's not evidence and then they hold um, a press conference saying the results. And then you don't show up because you think you were treated unfairly and that you think that the whole thing's rigged against you. You're a bitch. Show up to the inauguration. I don't even know if that's what it's called. Shake Joe Biden's hand. Show that this country can work together. People, people can, if you want to go to battle, to, you know, if you want to um, compete against, you know, somebody in an election and then you can't shake your their hand afterwards, I don't care what it, the, the Democrats were calling them their own running mates. Harris called Joe Biden a sex offender and a racist. And then a couple, you know, months later, joined up with him. So she is working with someone who she thinks is a racist and she's black, by the way, which is real weird. And a sex offender. So they have these backdoor tactics where they just say whatever they want with, and there's no consequences to their actions, calling people racist. They think Donald Trump's Hitler. If they think people in their own party who they team up and run with are sex offenders and racists, I don't want them leading our country at all. And the more these people talk, this, this is what I, I love about social media. The more these people talk, you see how fake and phony they are. And this won't happen overnight. Just like I said before, it'll the, the change happens slow. I like There was an analogy. I can't remember what it was. It's like the United States is a big battleship. And to turn that son of a bitch, you need time. It takes a while. It slowly changes. Even like a small... Um, a tiny change at the helm could may have big consequences later. And to get that bitch to swerve, I mean, you can ask the Titanic. They can't swerve. Big ship. I think that's our country. We start to slowly like, well, that politician seems like he's full of shit. She, and then with social media, they have to talk longer. You see more of them. People think social media is bad. It's not like everything has their, their, their negatives and positives. But we're going to see these people for who they really are. We saw who, who Gavin Newsom was. We saw who the, um, the the mayor in Chicago saying you can't go to a hair salon and then get, getting her hair done. And her, 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 her response to that was, well, I'm on TV and I have to look good. No, you don't have to look good. What you have to do is serve the people. Figure out how to save their lives during a pandemic that you think is killing everybody. That's what you have to do. Nobody cares how you look. You self-indulged bitch. Oh my, how could you do that? How could you sit there and say that? I have to look presentable. No, you don't. I don't care if you come to work in your pajamas. This is a pandemic. Get to work and figure out the best solution for this. The best solution is not for you to get your hair cut, which looks exactly the same, by the way. It's, and then Nancy Pelosi, same thing. She goes to a salon. These fucking women can't stay out of the salon. Is this, they just wanted the whole salon to themselves? Is, is that what it is? They didn't want lines? They didn't like having, having to wait? What's going on here? It's real weird. And then Nancy Pelosi gets called out on it, and she's like, "Well, they set me up." No, you went. Th- did they? Did they handcuff you and drag you into the building? No, you wanted your hair and your face done and your nails. 
You wanted the spa treatment and you didn't want anyone else in the building. And you're rich enough to have that privately anyway. Why can't you go to have them come to your house and do it? You're, aren't, aren't, you get paid real well, right? You're the speaker of the house. And I'm sure you have business interests. The biggest thing I, I would like to see, okay, there's one thing in politics that I would love to see changed. You can't do presidential people who um, run for office, and I would love to see how this would change um, change people's mentality as far as running. You cannot make money uh, ha- having speeches afterwards. Now, I don't know if that's legally. Legally, you can do that. But you cannot make money from being the president. It cannot be a financially um, enticing endeavor. Then I think we would get real leaders or we would get a whole bunch of crazy crackheads. One of the two. I don't know. I just kind of thought about it recently because I heard about how um, um, like the Clintons or the Obamas and then how much money Trump is going to make after getting out of the out of out of, out of there, if he writes a book, do you know how pol- do you know how crazy it's going to be if Donald Trump writes a book after this and how many millions of dollars he's going to get from it? It's going to be insane. And all the speeches he's going to go on, all these tours, like Michelle Obama, like Barack Obama's wife wrote a book and is making money off of being the first lady. Now, granted, I'd be doing the exact same thing because it's, it's not illegal. But don't you think there's an incentive to being the president should be to lead your people? And that's it. That's it. But they, they put in, um, Barack Obama bailed out the banks and then did speeches for the banks later and got paid hundreds of thousands of dollars for the speeches. What? That seems like a bribe that happens after. Not before, because bribes before, hey, I'm going to give you this money. You're going to do this. He's like, okay, cool. What Obama basically did was do the favor first and then get paid years later. So there is no connection to it. It's like, well, I bailed out all the banks. And then these big banks are like, hey, man, why don't you come by Oracle Arena? Talk for 45 minutes. Have a few stand-up comedians write a speech for you. Be funny. We'll all have And it's going to be $10,000 a plate. And it's going to be this social gathering, this connection thing. And we're going to pay you $500,000. And we're going to do this all over the country. That, to me, is a bribe to the president. But after. So it's not really a bribe. I don't know what, what, what that would be. That's interesting. Um, but no, but um, having that conversation with Ray um, really changed my... And then here in Tulsi Gabbard, 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 um, talk about the distinction that they cannot curate content on their website because then that makes them a news outlet. And then they would help be held liable, but they went to court for a long time to not be distinguished as that. So you have to allow free, the freedom, then the freedom of speech, the government's laws do affect private companies. Because that was my whole thing. I was like, I don't want government telling a website what to have and to not have on it. But if the government isn't involved, then you have to have um, freedom of speech on the website. Otherwise, it's a news outlet. Then you can be sued. So if you're trying to avoid being sued by it, outside, you know, outside people and saying, Hey, look, we're a free platform. We're basically the self, we're basically the cell phone company offering a service and anyone can use it. So then we can't be sued later for whatever the people do. The people have to be responsible for it. So there's that argument, which I thought was the, which which was the better argument. Raymond just kept saying, uh, what did he say? Uh, he was like, it's my right. It's my freedom of speech. It's the First Amendment, freedom of speech. And I was like, no one's stopping you from talking or arresting you. That's not the point. 
you can still go, um, you know, uh, take out, you know, a, uh, not a petition. What's the right word? You can have, um, would you have a, uh, God, I'm losing my mind right now. I apologize. When you have a, um, a gathering, you have to get, um, God, the, the, what is it? The right to protest. When you protest, you have to sanction it with the government. Otherwise, um, and the reason that that law, because you have to legally protest. You have to get a, a man, what is the, uh, why, why am I so dumb? James Harden just got traded too, by the way. Um, how to legally protest. I'm going to figure out. Protest artwork? I don't know what that means. Decide what type of protest do you want? There are forms for peaceful protest that can express dissatisfaction. Dissatisfa oh, dissatisfaction. Dissatisfaction. I'm dumb. Without resorting to violence or anger. But what is the... Let's put a fart into the jar and mail it to the White House while Ronchi trying to finish fiction and then try to... Can't finish. That's dumb. Uh, a permit. That's a... God, I'm so stupid. A permit. You have to go to the courthouse, wherever you go to get protest, uh, permits. You have to get a permit to protest. So... Um, because if you don't, because people used to protest um, for business reasons. So say if you owned a donut shop and another donut shop, shop moved in to, because before you didn't have to have a permit, but people would use this to get, so they would throw protests out in, um, in front of the, op the opponent's, I don't know, competition's um, store. And that way people couldn't come in and that store would slowly go to business. It was a business tactic to get rid of people. So then the government's like, well, we can't have you protest anywhere, but we need you to protest. We need to have that freedom of expression, that freedom of speech, so people don't feel like we're controlling everything because that could lead to disastrous results later. So now you have to get a permit. So you have to legally al allow people to protest where they want, but it within reason. You can't have a protest bl blocking something, blocking a business, Oh, so then, because that infringes on other people's rights. I can't remember the point I was trying to make with that. The original. No, I don't know. But the whole thing's real, real interesting. I'm getting more and more, and I guess everyone gets into politics more and more as uh, we get older. But just seeing these grown adults go back and forth, talk at, talk out of both sides of their mouths and then just say whichever, um, what, whichever, uh, their fan base, whatever is going to get them votes. It's like every politician was against gay marriage until a mass majority, a big portion of the population was fine with it. Then they changed their tune. Barack Obama was the same way. He changed his tune because he thought it would get him more votes. And it's like, oh, because you won't, then you only care about the vote. You don't, you don't really have a, a moral ground to stand on when it comes to that. So it's pretty, it's interesting to see these politicians eh, backtrack, eh, get out of here. Bill Clinton's "Don't ask, don't tell" in the military, basically saying, hey, if you're gay, we'll let you. It doesn't matter, but we're not going to ask if you're gay. We, we don't care as long. Just don't bring it up. Don't talk about ew, yucky gay people. So if you supported Clinton, then you supported that. And it's the same way people think if you support Trump, then you're you're for all the bad shit that he did. You're for all the negative things. Like, no, you can you can support a candidate because just one issue that he's standing on, he or she is standing on, affects you and you like that. And then they could be terrible in a whole bunch of other reasons, a whole, whole bunch of other facets. So it's like... What are we doing here? Both sides have done and said stupid shit. Can we do that? And then can we agree to that and then move on? Okay. Can, oh, we can't. Okay. Your, your side's perfect. Got it. But this James Harden trade like that, uh, I'm trying to see here. 
news. Montreal Record Package offers bridge for hard overturned California drivers with no DUIs getting a payday on Thursday. I haven't had any DUIs. And why don't you get a reward for that? You know, you get punished for it. You should get a reward. Your reward is you have to pay the same as everybody else. But um, switching to basketball for a moment. It's very interesting that these NBA players have, if they have, if they're going towards, um, what is it? Um, What am I trying to say? If they're going towards, if they're nearing towards the end of their contracts, they have all of the, the power in, in their contracts. And then at the beginning, so say if Paul George, since he signed that extension, that five-year deal, he has no negotiating power to get traded. They can ask, he can ask for a trade and they'll be like, what? We just signed you. No, you're going to stay here for years, five years. Next five years, you're going to be here. Or at least the next three until we can trade you. Because James Harden, with two years left on his deal, the team, if you have one year left, if you're playing out your last year of your contract, um, the player can say, hey, well, hey, I'm going to finish out this year and not sign with the team I get traded to. So then that team has the incent- has no incentive to, tr- to give up anything of value because they can use the argument, well, this guy's going to leave in a year. We have no assurance that he's going to leave. So you're going to get less stuff. You're going to get less valuable um, pieces back. So James Harden, he has this year and next year left on his contract, and he's asking for a trade. And so the team has team that's getting him has two years to to make the deal. So they have he has the team has a little bit more power, but not really. James Harden can just come out and say, "Hey, I want to be traded," but he can't say that. But he did. He's like, I, "I gave it everything I got." Um. He's like, I, and I don't know what else to do. Like you're, you're basically asking for a trade. And I don't like these, I don't like any, I don't like how um, teams wheel and deal players a lot of times. And then I also don't like how players abandon their teams. There's no loyalty and nobody seems to care about the fans at all. That's what it comes comes off as anyway. I'm just sitting there thinking... Like there isn't there something to have holding a team together for a long period of time, team camaraderie, any anything like that. When you see Draymond Green play with Steph Curry, you're like, oh, these guys have been playing together for damn near 10 years. Oh, okay. Like how long how long has where is Steph Curry? Points, Newman Lillard. Why isn't Steph in any of these things? Where is it yesterday? Season leaders here. Season, there we go. Season type profile per game. No, season type. Regular season history here. Because Steph has played, he got, he was in 09. Yeah, but he, he's been in the league 11 years now. One, two, three. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. This is his twelfth NBA season. It's interesting. These players just keep jumping. They, oh, I want to go play with my buddy Kyrie. I want to go play with my buddy KD. And then they just have these super teams for two or three years, and then they they lose. They get bored of playing with each other. There's no team camaraderie. They lose, and then they get they get split up. It's interesting. I want to see what they um, – the Rockets had James Harden he, they, in a four-team deal, which is how the only I think the only way that they would get this done. The Rockets get Victor Oladipo from the Pacers. Um, Rodians? Kirkus. Kirkus. I don't know who he is. I'm going to click on him for a second. 
Kirkus um, was dealt to the Rockets in a blockbuster trade that saw James Harden being moved. Kirkus hasn't um, much of a role this season, playing a total of 16 minutes across five games. He could uh, see a pickup um, of workload with the Rockets, but it's seemingly unlikely he would um, be enough for him to for him relevant in fantasy. <laughs> That's what, don't pick him up in rather. Re- he's, he's not relevant. Question one for Thursday. Hmm, interesting. So I don't know who who the hell that is. Uh, Dante Exum, former high draft pick, but didn't really pan out too well. Um, they get four unprotected first round picks. They get Brooklyn's 2022, 2024, and 2026 first round picks, and Milwaukee's 2022. I'm guessing Brooklyn had that one. And four unprotected first round pick swaps in 21, 23, 25, and 2027. So they gave up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight first round picks. They gave up the next eight years of first round picks for James Harden. They are sacrificing the next eight years for a 31-year-old scoring machine, chubby scoring machine that doesn't play any defense. So the Brooklyn Nets, so when the Brooklyn Nets can pick My mother's calling me. I'm going to call her back real quick. Hold on. Let me see. Hey. Hey, what are you doing? Uh, nothing. Um, but um, I'm working out. Is it an emergency? No. Can I call you back? Sure. Love you. Love you, too. Love you. That old bag. She listens to the podcast. Probably she's the only one that does listen to it. All, all 10 uh, listens each week. Ten of them. All her. I appreciate it, Mom. Thank you. But they give eight. Can you imagine? James Harden is. How how old is James Harden? I want to see how old this man is. Where's like a search? Players. Search. Get out of here. I don't care about your cookie policy. Jeez. There's no search? Okay, there it is. I was like, where can I type in? James Harden, Arizona State. How old is? 31 years old. So he's not going to play into his 40s. I don't see, but his, but I like his, because um, his game does not rely heavily on athleticism. So I think his game and his shooting ability and all of that will age better. As time goes on. So I want to see teams. I want to see Brooklyn Nets here. Team. I do roster. First recipe fund. Okay. Are you trying to get me to donate to something? Can I just look at the roster, please? Thank you. Roster. Team roster. I don't like how this, this is. This is not. I don't, like, I don't like how that's set up. So Kevin Durant is. Why can't I full bio? Can I get full bio here on Katie? Katie, Katie. Katie is 32. So it's, it's in the same timetable. And Kyrie is born in 1992. So he is 28. Same, same timetable. So early 30s, late 20s type people. Joe, let's see. Joe Harris. People who are going to kind of go with him. Go with him. Where's Joe Harris? He's a starter. This is going to be a really good team. Jesus, obviously. I know Joe Harris is like, how am I going to get a shot? How am I going to get a rhythm? 29, yeah. He's he's right along with him. So all these guys are built to go another, like on a three to four year run. And then they're going to start slowing down, I would say. Like statistically, yes, they could, you know, defy odds. 
but it's real. So they're going to have the next three or four years is going to be successful. Could be championships, but then you're going to have no, do you go all out? Is that a good way to do business? Basketball business. I don't know. Do you, do you forfeit your future for the next three years? So do you forfeit possibly? You, obviously, you don't know what's going to happen in the future. So you could, I don't know. Anything could happen. But I guess I guess you got to respect it. But then how how much, like in, four, like in five years, I'm going to assume Kevin Durant's not going to be the second best player in the league. James Harden isn't going to be the leading scorer. And Kyrie Irving it might be at his, you know, I might be retired. Who knows? So the next three years, the Houston Rockets own all of your first round picks. You could easily have like unprotected for the next eight years. They have your first round picks. Now it's obviously not going to matter for sure. The next, you know, hopefully barring injury two to three years, but they eight, 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 Years? Eight years. The Golden State Warriors couldn't keep their dynasty going for eight years. And you're be- in your in Brooklyn Nets, you're betting just we're gonna be shit for three of these years and not get any first round picks. We're, we're gonna be the New York Knicks in four to, in four to five years. But hopefully we have a few championships. I don't know how you could uh What's the right word? How you can sacrifice or forfeit that many years for these, for, I don't know, for three, for basically three years. But but hopefully they can keep it going. Hopefully they can defy the odds and keep it going. I'm going to end the podcast there. This has been the Chase Carter Concept Podcast for January 14th, 2021. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, I think I went a little bit long, but who cares? Who cares? Um, I appreciate the people who listen. If if you have anything, um, any um, comments, if you want to write in, there is a website or website. I'm an idiot. A um, an email address that you can go to. I'm trying to find. Trying to bring it up. See, it's not even. Oh, there isn't. Never mind. I was going to say you can call, you know, blah, 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 blah. I'm, I say as I like on Xbox. Um, it's just spelled out normally. No, no trickery here. Um, Instagram. Um, it's my name, Chase Carter. Bracketed with the uh, number one on either side. Um, yeah, you can uh, follow me there. Uh, and then me and my friend Ray have a video games and nonsense podcast we do every Tuesday. Um, it's up on YouTube and all the podcast networks um, called Video Games and Nonsense uh, with Chase and Raymond. Um, appreciate you guys listening. Uh, and I'll be posting next week. You'll be hearing from me next week. All right. Thanks, guys. Take it easy. Easy on you. Uh, I got this shit knocking low.